Today, we're going to review the installation of my new lithium ion deck mount converter charger by WFCO. The reason I'm installing this is I purchased this Battleborn battery here, which is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's 100 amp hours, and I replaced my lead acid battery that came with the RV with this Battleborn battery. And when I did that, I did call Battleborn and I talked to them about the replacement. I asked them, you know, is it just a drop in replacement? I kind of read some stuff online that said it would just be a drop in replacement. So I thought, oh, that's pretty easy, right? So, um, what the, the lithium ion battery does for us is it's going to basically create double the capacity of our old battery because you can discharge the lithium batteries down to almost zero percent whereas the lead acid batteries you can only discharge 50 percent before they start becoming damaged i thought yeah that's all well and great you know so I, they they did tell me at battleborn originally though that my converter charger that came with the rv uh it was a wfco and the model number was a 9855, WF-9855. They said that would probably only charge the battery to 80% capacity, and it would be a slower charge, but it would still be compatible. It still works. So I was like, oh, cool. You know, I, I could probably deal with 80%, you know, thinking it would be okay. But um, turns out, <laughs> we found out the hard way, it wasn't okay. Uh, we actually went boondocking for the first time up in the San Juan National Forest. And when we did that, um, we ran the generator to recharge the battery with the old converter. And it was a very slow charge. Um, it wasn't working at all. So it, after only one day, we took off back down to the RV park here and I ordered this new converter. The old converter was a 55 amp. The model number once again was a 9855. This is a 50 amp 9850. Because our wiring in the trailer is only six AWG wire, it's only rated for 55 amps. So I, I wanted to go with something 55 amps or lower for the converter. Uh, Battleborn actually recommended a progressive charger that was a higher amperage it was 60 amp and i wasn't going to put that in so i wasn't going to do that so that's why we're going with this same uh, brand 50 amp converter I, I actually called wfco today this should be a direct replacement so there's only a positive and a negative wire that i have to remove there's actually a plug on the back of the old converter there's a, a three prong plug plugs into the back of the distribution center and this has the same plug on it so should be pretty simple um, i sure hope that this charges much better i do have a battery monitor that i installed as well the bmv 712 that i'm going to make a video about that as well uh, on that installation and uh, we're going to test this out and see if this is actually going to charge our battery a lot better than the old converter which it's supposed to so we'll see what happens so come along with us and check it out first thing i'm going to do here is shut off the battery disconnect that's going to disconnect the dc power that's running from the battery to our converter second thing i'm going to do is shut off the power at the power pedestal in our rv park And I'm even going to unplug this for good measure. So you can now see this is our surge guard on the inside of the trailer. There is no power there. Just to confirm, no power. And we also have no power at our lights in the trailer. So there's no DC power. And here's the new converter out of the box. Here's the plug I was talking about with the three prongs. A positive and a negative terminal. And then there's also a grounding terminal right here. Okay, here's our power distribution panel underneath the stove. So we're gonna take that loose. There's four screws, gonna remove those. All 
All right, so you can see the converter back there in the back. It's mounted to the deck with four screws. So we'll remove those screws, take loose those connections there, the positive and negative. There is a ground on here as well. On the left side, so we'll go ahead and swap that ground as well with the converter. To make it a little easier to get back in there, I'm going to use my impact driver and that will allow me to get into that tight space back there to take those screws out. Right here is where the old inverter is plugged into the back of the distribution panel. So that's the first thing we're going to do is unplug that. This is the new converter and on these lugs here I'm using a 532nd Allen wrench to loosen those up and that's what I'm going to use on the original converter as well. I'm assuming it's going to be the same size. Also got to loosen this ground lug up. These lugs are now out of the way for the wires to enter into those terminals. Okay, they had those lugs really tight, which is a good thing. It means the wires weren't going to come loose. So throwing me for a little bit of a loop here, literally. <laughs> uh, the ground wire on, that you can see on the left side there is looped down to the chassis and then it's looped through there. It runs back here to the back of the distribution panel right there. So I gotta come here on the front side of the distribution panel and loosen that up in order to take that out, route it back through the converter, and then the converter will be able to be taken out of there. All right, so as you can see, that wasn't the easiest thing to get loose because it's such a small cramped space, but uh, finally got it loose. The ground wire is still connected through that hole on the grounding side of it, but um, the converter's loose now, so I'm just gonna pull that out and then I'll remove that ground wire. I think that was gonna be the easiest way to do it. I did leave that one screw in the back and I'm actually gonna install the other screw again on the side that's hard to get to just down close to the bottom because the flange on the side of the converter will allow it to slide in place. And then I'll just tighten it down, probably even by hand. I'll use a screwdriver, tighten those couple down by hand once I get that converter slid back into place. And then I can insert the screws on the other side to hold the converter down on the right side. So yeah, that's where we're at right now. Great success. Got the converter out. That ground wire definitely made it tough to get out. All right, I've kind of straightened this ground wire out as much as possible along the entire length back in there. And that way I can slide the new converter with 
the ground right there. Slide that right down. Converters in place. The positive and negative terminals are in, the ground's in, all the screws are in to hold the converter down to the deck. Just need to now finish putting the ground wire back through the distribution panel, tightening that down in the front, and then we can plug it in and turn the power on, see what we got. All right, back out here at the power pedestal. Moment of truth. Plug back in, switch back on. And we're gonna turn the battery back on. And you can see our surge guard here has a delay. It's usually about a minute and a half. It has a delay before it actually kicks the power back on from the shore power. So once that kicks on, that'll supply the converter with power. Right now the converter is connected to the battery so there is a connection there. And here is the battery monitor. So you can currently see that there's a negative current 1.97. Voltage is at 13.21 right now. And once again that's close to as high as it would go it went up to maybe 13.3, 13.4 before. All right, power just kicked on. You just heard the microwave kick on. So now you can see the current is 25 amps going into the battery. Voltage is kicked way up, 13.48. That's extremely high compared to what we had previously with the old converter. The old converter probably only put in maybe one, two, maybe two and a half amps. We're gonna see how quickly this charges. Should be pretty quick with that kind of amperage going in. All right guys, it's the next morning after we did a test. We fully charged the lithium battery last night and then we shut off the shore power at the RV park here and tested it overnight. We had a low of about 35 degrees last night, so the furnace ran most of the night. Furnace draws a lot of power, draws at least 10, 11 amps. Um, so yeah, the uh, whenever we shut the power down, the state of charge on the uh, battery monitor was at 100%, and it was fully charged. After it was charged, it dropped down to around 13.6, a little over 13.6 which is a good charge, a full charge for lithium, even though it can, it can range from 13.6 to 14.6. So while it was charging, it, it charged up to around 14.6. After the converter shut down, it dropped down to 13.6. And the next morning here, you can see on the battery monitor, we now have a voltage of 13.21. It's saying the state of charge is 74%, which if you look at that chart, so 13.2 is about 70% on this chart. 
13.3 is 90%. So after letting the battery fully charge with that new converter, uh, the cells, I'm assuming from everything I'm reading, the cells were balanced and uh, the, the charge was complete. So it was an actual full charge this time. So uh, these lithium converters will charge your battery properly. All right, so here's an update on the converter charger. We've been using it for a couple weeks now and uh, we're out boondocking right now. You can see the current is at 25.89 amps, 82% charge. It was actually overnight last night. It went down to about 58% and I've uh, been charging now for about an hour. It's up to 82%. I think that within another hour here, it's probably gonna be fully charged, but uh, it seems to be working pretty well. The consumed amp hours this morning, when we looked at it, were 42 plus amp hours, and we're now charged to negative 18. So that will eventually go down to zero for consumed amp hours, and that'll be fully charged at that time. Okay, we're now at an hour and 45 minutes approximately, 98% charged. Uh, consumed amp hours are now negative 2.2, so um, almost completely charged. The current is at 18.11 it was, and it's slowly working its way down. It just changed there. All right, so actually while we were watching that, it changed from bulk charging mode to the absorption charge mode. It's now charging at a lower amperage. You can see the voltage has dropped down to 13.58. So um, being that it's almost fully charged, the converter charger has now went into absorption mode. Yeah, so I, I mean, it, it is doing a good job charging the battery, hour 45 minutes to charge close to 40%. And um, you know, we are going to be building a solar suitcase here as well so that we don't have to rely completely on the generator, have solar power, free energy. So looking forward to that. So that'll be in an upcoming video soon that um, I'll have available for you guys to see how we put that together. So hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.